Hi, my name is Ewan. I'm gonna uh, introduce the debouncing mechanism for our push buttons. So the push button module is used to eliminate noise from a mechanical push button using a debounce circuit. It uses a slow clock module. Um, the slow clock submodule generates a lower frequency clock from the input uh, clock signal. This slower clock is then used to drive two D flip flop in series. The purpose of this D flip flop is to filter out the mechanical noise inherent in push button press when push button is pressed. Um, the final output debounce out gives us a clean and stable signal for further processing. This is our slow clock module. It features a counter that increments on each rising edge of the input clock. When the, when the counter reaches a preset value, in this case, it was uh, 1.25 milliseconds. Um, it resets to zero and toggles the out, output clock. This creates create a much slower clock. In, this will create a much slower clock cycle. Uh, this is our D flip up module, which captures um, the value at its, at its D input at the rising edge of the clock and hold its value until the next clock edges. Hi, my name is Mayid, and I'll be going over the Morse to text module, which basically encodes our button inputs into ones and zeros, ones being dashes and zeros being dots. Um, we can see we, we initialize our registers here on the previous state registers, which are needed to update our, uh, our button inputs or basically go through our loops on the positive edge of the button. Um, so we reset the temporary variables at the beginning of the code using an initial begin. And then basically on the positive edge of the clock, um, we we like update the previous state registers. And here we can see instead of going to button, button four is basically the reset button. And then it resets all the variables and button one or button two being pressed increments our temp bits, which is basically the button click counter, uh, which is needed to act as our opcode for the mux or basically our mux variable later on the decoder. Um, and then here we just check if temp bits just went over the clicking limit. We don't want it to be over four. So if you click four, five dots, that will basically effectively be an E instead of being any other value. This is basically what this statement is doing. Um, and then button three num is basically the, the variable that's responsible for populating different bits of our massive 32 bit register and 24 bit register, which are all and all bits. Um, here we assign zeros and ones to button one and button two. So if button one is clicked, we will assign a zero, which is basically a dot. And if button two is clicked, we assign a one, which is basically a dash. And then here we see if button three is clicked, we populate our registers accordingly um, and then increment button three now. Uh, and then at the end, we assign FSMN or update FSMN with our all and all bits, which are, are our temporary large registers, and then update the output, which we will send. Uh, and then like reset our temp bits and temp FSMN because we will need other values in them. And then reset our I, I which is basically a loop variable kind of. Um, or a counter. It's basically indexing into the temp bits and temp of some. And then lastly, we have button five. So once button five is clicked, uh, it decrements it, decrements button three num if it's not zero or if it's greater than zero. Um, and instead of populating our, our register with temp FSMN and temp bits, we just populate it with zero, which effectively deletes it. So that's basically our dots, dashes, 
preset um, and backspace and enter buttons. All right, my name is Rafi. I'll be going over the FSM. This FSM takes in the outputs from the uh, morse to text. Um, the, the inputs for this FSM are a 32-bit um, FSM in, and that, that represents the anode, and a 24-bit uh, um, uh, cathode or bits. Uh, the FSM in is 32. Um, it is because there are eight different LEDs that we have um, the 32 bits. And like, uh, likewise, uh, there's 24 bits, um, which um, is for the uh, LEDs. This is specific because we would take four bits from the FSM in and three from the bits. I'll explain as we go through it. Um, so for this FSM, we have a, a four bit register and a, a three bit MUX in. Um, and in this um, case, we have eight states for the eight anodes. I and mean, we instantiate the decoder. And this is assigning the, um, across the eight different um, LEDs, zero to seven are eight different LEDs. Um, for this, we have a state machine which takes in our FSM in and takes about, uh, and this is a split between four, uh, four bits all, all up to the 32. And in this case, we have it up to the 24. Um, and at the end of this, uh, utilizing the decoder, the, the FSM will have uh, distributed um, the, the letters across the LED. Hello, my name is Anis, and uh, I'm going to be uh, detailing how the decoder works. So our decoder takes in two inputs. It takes in the FSM 4-bit value, which is just indexed from the larger register. And then it also takes your bit count, which is uh, from the 24-bit register uh, in the Morse text uh, translator. And then it outputs a this, this register right here, which then goes to the seven-segment display and, and assigns basically which anodes to turn on and cathodes to turn on. So we have a case statement here that takes the bit count basically. So the, what these bits are counting is how many times each button is pressed. So we have the zero case here where no buttons are pressed. This gives us just everything is off basically. And then if one button is pressed, we have two cases where we have a T and E encoded here. This, this is read from right to left. We read this as dash and then nothing else. And then this one's just one dot, which is why the, the rightmost zero. Case two is similar, uh, except in this case, like we have M and N, which is basically just dash dash, and then we have dash dot. And then the, the similar thing is for three and four, which are these are the cases where three buttons are pressed and four buttons are pressed. And that's basically how the decoder works. So this is the working demo of our um, Morse to text translator. Um, it's accompanied by this Python script that we wrote that will translate a text into a Morse code dot um, and dash. So we're gonna use the example hello, and it's gonna give us what our Morse code input should be. So moving to the FPGA, we're gonna demonstrate this. The Morse code translator uses five buttons. Um, we have enter, dot, dash, backspace, and reset. Uh, now we're gonna show how it uh, is done. One, two, three, four. One. This is a hello. So this button is the backspace button. So you will delete the last input we input. So when I press this, the O will disappear. And when I press it again, L will disappear. And the button at the top is the reset button. So when we click this, it will clear all the inputs. All right, so here, what we're doing is we're going through each letter of the alphabet just to show what the encoding would look like on the seven segment display. It's slightly different than traditional letters, so we just want to show that.